Let's give it a shot, guys. In media res. So, shh. We're going to pretend that we're still working really hard and we just entered all these notes and we just played them. So, let's see what this sounds like. And then... Hmm. So let's see what the melody sounds like with all this passing chord on it. That sounded different. and madams wherever you are thank you for your time and attention as always today we have been doing composing a ballad part nine circle line so we went in and said that after part eight where we did a regrouping exercise one of the key things we came up with was the idea of we wanted to address circle line in music design and we felt that it would be particularly well. And then we did an exercise working with a musical snippet, and we did some analysis of what we called passing chords. So in today's stream, we did a concept sketch. What do we mean by circle line music design? And what we came up with is we said a circle is when all notes are played at the same time, such as a chord, like a B flat 4 2 chord. And a line is when the notes occur in sequence, such as an arpeggio, where if we took the B flat D E and played them in the sequence instead of the chord, that would be the line. So we said, well, let's try to apply it to the ballad that we worked on in the past. And this is what we came up with. We said that there are a, a set of bass chords, what we've called the cadence. Bum, 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 bum. And the melody backbone that goes with it. Bum, 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 bum. Like that. And then we had noticed that in between there are passing notes. So here, anytime it is a backbone note, we'll show it as red, which means it's in in the cadence. And any time it's outside the backbone note, we showed that as orange, which meant they were passing notes. And then we realized that every time you go from a red through an orange to a red, you are, there is what we called an implied chord that goes with it. And in this case, uh, there's a red and a orange and a red, and you can see that down here, red, orange, red. He said, well, yeah, but this went down. It went, you know, down, down, like that. But we said, from when we look at it from the point of view all notes at the same time, we don't care what direction it was in. So, three notes there you go and then every time we move along here right from here to here 
Now we have orange, red, orange. There's another implied passing chord. And we went merrily through all this. And so we said, okay, well, let's do it. And we did. We went from uh, the first place where we ha where could have a uh, passing chord over here, C, D, F. And over here in our little passing chord analysis, we said, well, that D, that's in the middle over here. And it's got a C in front of it and an F behind it. And voila, that's the passing chord. And so we went all the way through and we did that. Now, we related this to the idea of the circle line. Because we said, uh, well, clearly the melody, the notes occur in sequence, so that's a line. And clearly the cadence notes occur all at once each time you hit them. So clearly that's a circle. And then he said, but well, what about these, these passing chords? And we said they're implied circles. That's what we said. And that's what we said. And so we were fascinated with that. And, and we went back and, you know, edited our ballot line some more. And then at the very end, as we were kind of dum, 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 playing the backbone, we said, wait a minute. The backbone is a line. The backbone by itself is a line. So could we not say that there are some backbone passing chords? And the, we said, why, well, yes. And we played one or two of them. But then we kind of punted and said, OK, well, that's a little too far. We'll defer that for future analysis. But nevertheless, we took the time and trouble to add them to this concept diagram because it is intriguing. Now, one of the whole reasons we wanted to talk about circle line is because it was the idea of hearing things all at once at the same time, which is circle, and then hearing things sequentially, which is line. And there, those are, in some sense, two different modes of human perception. And tradition has claimed that visual art, like a painting, uh, could be considered an all-at-once mode of art, whereas music is inherently linear and sequential because you're doing this melody thing. And that didn't, we didn't buy that. We said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's kind of a hear, hearing it all at once thing going on. But it's true, there is a certain linear thing. And so that kind of culminated in this this concept diagram that we just spent a whole bunch of time going over with you guys. Well and good, I hear you saying, but what does it sound like? So, here's what the original... <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are, this is my mandatory mea culpa. I am streaming from a music cafe, and in addition to the periodic noise and crying babies, sometimes there are people stumbling into your table. Here is the original first phrase of the ballad. Here it is repeated with the passing chords added. And 
I know it's going by fast, but what I hear is like an added richness uh, by explicitly calling out the passing chord. So over here, da 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 da, it's like this, da 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 da. Also, a little interesting bit of dissonance. Da, da, da. There's like a ringing extra resonance in there. And we even added what we wanted to call kind of a, 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 an implied melody. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. make this really loud. Just to kind of dramatically highlight it. So, this is very encouraging. It's encouraging because it kind of confirms our notion of spending time to look at these passing chords. And the passing chords offer a way to add more something or other to our music composition, like we call it a passing melody in here. But at the same time, listening to it, That, to me, sounds even richer. It's, it's like, it's, it's a more dense fabric, but it's also still consistent with the, if we, if we try to use our physiological metaphors and the, the melody up here is the skin on our wrist and the, the, the bass chords are, or the cadence are the bones and the, the backbone is part of the bones. I don't what to call to call the passing chords might be the underlying musculature of the fresh or something. And it has that little jarry feel to it, and yet we knew there was a jarry feel because when you go to F to an E, that's a interval of one. And and the for the very chords that are being evoked are two threes, two ones. And over here, uh, where it passes to phrase two, phrase two, uh, we get that. Let's play that part as well. And then if we pass to the second line. I mean, that really emphasizes how we're going to pass off to the next line. And that was kind of the implied melody we heard. So that's where we got to today. And where we'll go next, uh, oh, we had all these ideas on where to go next. Uh, I still want to look at variation two and uh, had an idea for changing the bass chords. Uh, maybe we still need to keep working and looking at the passing chords in variation one. Um, we're still processing the regrouping exercise we did in the last stream and uh, being able to, to come up with these concept diagrams I think is a key new stake in the ground for us to work with moving forward in our compositional endeavors. Sirs and madams wherever you are, thank you as always for your time and attention and interest. And we will look forward to seeing you at the next stream. Keep on streaming. <laughs>